Hi friends, uh, my name is Scott Jensen and I'm a collaborating partner here at Silo Health. Uh, in this unit, I'm gonna be talking about the roles of the Silo Health psilocybin peer supporter or PPS as we call it. Now this role is an important one for creating supportive communities around people choosing to use psilocybin outside of clinical or ceremonial contexts. Uh, as we began concepting a model around a holistic psychedelic community care system, uh, we saw an opportunity to develop self-supporting communities where facilitators might not be present. And this is one key role in treating mental health disorders and also for supporting personal and spiritual growth in a variety of populations with healer inclusivity as a first principle. Now, like many of you, I started on the path of working with psychedelics to heal myself. And I did so at first without the support of a healthy and informed community. And through my own struggles to find community support, I ended up organically becoming a peer supporter myself. Uh, this started as just being a friendly ear to hear people's stories, and eventually it resulted in being asked to hold space for people while they were involved with the macrodose. Uh, as I was trusted to help more and more people through my work as a community organizer and supporter, um, I began pulling a lot of the concepts that we're teaching today from more established sources in order to inform my own view on what effective psychedelic peer support should look like. And since joining Silo Health, I've been blessed enough to work with so many great caring minds, a few of which you'll meet here, to help codify a multidisciplinary approach to being a more active community member and supporter of others. Now, this process has been a culmination of a lot of minds concerned with how to best assist your peers without creating hierarchies, establishing power differentials, projecting personal feelings and non-relevant cultures, and preserving autonomy in people's connection to psilocybin. To do this, we think it's really helpful to have clearly defined roles and responsibilities to go along with this course, and the certification if you choose to become certified by Silo Health. Now, while the roles and responsibilities of a Silo Health psilocybin peer supporter are by no means the be all end all of supporting others in their psychedelic experiences, we truly feel that it's an informed approach free of problematic dogma and belief systems. Now, we hope that you find this course useful in your goal to become a more active member of the psychedelic community. First and foremost, your role as a Silo Health psilocybin peer supporter is one of safety and harm reduction. If you're not able to be a vessel for safe journeying and aftercare, then any other action you take to support a journeyer is all for naught. Now, this includes proper care and attention towards the set and setting of persons you're supporting, to educating them on what they can expect in order to reduce anxiety and act as a prophylactic for self-harm, and also not overstepping your abilities and attempting to be a journeyer's therapist, guide, or shaman. This also includes safety for yourself, as a peer supporter, it's important that you not only have conversations with your peer that you may be supporting about how you're protecting your own safety, but also making sure you're taking time to exercise self-care. Compassion fatigue or an association with another person's experience can be very draining. So make sure that you're supporting yourself as well as your peer. Now it's impossible to pour from an empty vessel. And if you're not concerned with your own mental health and well-being, you will not be able to effectively support your peers. You'll see these concepts revisited throughout the course, but it's very important to establish the baseline for peer support as being do no harm. Now, a part of doing no harm is understanding your limited role in being a peer supporter. Oftentimes, when someone has had profound psychedelic experiences, they feel called to help others. Now, this is a beautiful part of the entheogenic experience, and it speaks to the power of these medicines that they entice people to want to help others and give them that experience. Now, all of us here at Silo Health have felt this calling, and Silo Health as an organization is a product of this calling but we must all be very mindful of our own abilities and understanding of the process and skills when approaching the role of a helper, as the psychedelic experience can make us feel as though we have achieved a place of enlightenment and wisdom. There's a quote attributed to Carl Jung, beware of unearned wisdom. Now, I believe that part of what he meant was that you can receive insights, but without the solid framework of understanding and expressing those insights through experience, you don't have wisdom. 
And this elevated sense of self that comes from the psychedelic experience can lead us to take action with others that may not be in their best interest. So we encourage our psilocybin peer supporters to not try and assume the role of a therapist unless they've had extensive training in therapeutic modalities or integration. At the end of this course, you will also not be qualified to assume the role of shaman, facilitator, curandero, maestro, guide, or any other word for indigenous healer or plant medicine practitioner. Although Jahan does go over some of the history of shamanism and we want you to know about human beings past as purposeful psychedelic users and in the present, the goal of course is not to show you some version of gringo shamanism. Now gringo shamanism, for those of you that aren't really initiated, is cultural appropriation of traditional practices used um, in the Western world to make money. In fact, if you're looking for a course online to become a professional plant medicine practitioner or a shaman, we would advise you to reevaluate what you feel to be the process you need to go through on that particular path. For this course, the job is simple. As a Silo Health psilocybin peer supporter, your aim should be to provide non-directive support and safety to your peer. Now, I'd like to explore a few of these terms and roles a bit further to better position the PPS role. First, I'm going to start with the therapist relationship. A therapist is a professional trained in interventions and techniques for exploring a client's inner world, where you create an alliance through connection and skillful guiding to help them achieve their own healing. Now, I can't stress this enough. Unless you have clinical training, do not try to act as a therapist during preparation, dose day support, or post journey. Journeyers will be at a very suggestible place during this time, and your good intentions can have consequences for the journeyer. If you have therapeutic training or would like to be of a deeper level of service to those having psychedelic experiences, there are many great options for deepening your training. So let's talk about shamans. Now a shaman is a person selected in a very early age to undergo a process of initiation whereby they develop a special relationship with plant medicines. Now this is guided by traditional ways of working with the plants and fungi developed over many, many years. And there are rituals that are taught along with different traditions. Now at Silo Health, we believe that ritual is very helpful and important, but we don't ascribe to any particular rituals or tradition along with journeying. And you don't have to be a shaman to create ritual. As you support more people and learn more about your own practice with psilocybin, we encourage you to engage in rituals that assist the process and help to more mindfully approach your journeys and that of the peers that you support. But just copying things that you see legitimate shamans doing does not give you power. So don't think that just because you can shake a rattle or wear a fancy hat that you're a curandero. You can wear all of the regalia and build a cool altar and still have no idea what you're doing. So let's talk about what a peer supporter is. Now, a peer supporter acts as a close friend or family member would to ensure a journeyer feels supported and safe as they explore their own consciousness. One of my mentors in the clinical psychology world once said to me, if more people had better friends, they wouldn't need therapists. And I think what he meant by that is that good friends help others reflect back on themselves in times of trouble. They don't judge, project, or give advice. They're there to display empathy and to help the person struggling with something, or even help someone grow when there's no trouble. I often think about that in reference to the role of a peer supporter, because essentially you're that friend. You're there for support and safety. So now that we have a general sense of roles down, let's talk about helping while the journeyer is in the experience. So let's say that someone has asked you to be there during their experience for safety. What should you do? The arc of the psilocybin experience, which Amy will talk about a little bit more in a later unit, will present the journeyer with many different experiences. And your role will shift as you are with the person during this time. When the journeyer first takes their dose, there may be anxiety, fear, excitement, elation, or even boredom. Now, during this time, it's important to be a comforting presence and responsive to any difficult emotions experienced. In my time acting as a guide, I tended to take journeyers through guided meditation to help ease them into the experience. But really all that's needed is to be a comforting presence and not feed into any negative emotions. So I want you to think about a time when you're with a friend or family member, when they're about to have a major life event that was uniquely theirs. How did you help to support them? During a macrodose experience, psilocybin can cause sensory distortion and make the journeyer feel quite intoxicated. 
Simple motor functions like walking or grasping things can become difficult. Psilocybin can also compel a person to do things that they may not normally do, including self-harm. Now, this requires a level of attentiveness to a journeyer that you are supporting if they need help doing typical things like walking to a bathroom, which can become quite difficult after ingesting a large dose. The journeyer may decide to engage in dangerous behavior, and your responsibility is to make sure that they can't hurt themselves. Now, deprocellization, euphoria, panic, anxiety, strange bodily sensations, disassociation. Now, these are all difficult things that a journeyer can experience. And as a peer supporter, it then becomes your responsibility to practice careful de-escalation and ensure safety for the journey and yourself. Are you ready to help a journey in crisis? Really ask yourself that question. Now, the good news is that, at least in my experience, difficult journeys are relatively rare when the right preparations are made to ensure that the journeyer has a comfortable, safe, and healthy sit and setting. And I don't need to tell you that overwhelmingly positive experiences are normally an easier experience for the journeyer, but they can still be overwhelming. Now, regardless of the state of the journeyer, the skills of the support are going to remain the same. So, one last thing I'd like to add, a lot of the person helping skills that you learn here will carry over into your personal life if you allow them to. Uh, one thing that my own personal journey of supporting others has taught me is that at the core, a peer supporter, uh, you're exercising skills that being a caring, loving human uses every day with friends and family in order to ensure that those around you are safe and can be the best version of themselves, but with a more informed approach. Now, my wish for every one of you embarking on this journey is that you learn more about yourself and your role in helping others. In the grand scheme of things, this isn't just about supporting journeyers. This is about your own personal growth and self-development. Well, that's about my time for this unit. Uh, in your next unit, Jahan will be taking you through a history of psychedelic medicine where you'll learn about how humans and some animals have had a relationship with psychedelic medicines for as long as we've recorded history and even farther. Thank you.